Hey folks, today we're talking about Nietzsche and the Übermensch. Übermensch in German means overman, superman, beyond man. Uh, think of it as a higher form of human life. The overman, or someone who goes beyond mankind, you'll notice the entertaining graphic over here with the face of Nietzsche, with his legendary mustache. There are marked similarities between the English Superman and the Nietzschean Übermensch. The Übermensch is seen as this higher form of human life, might even have supernatural powers, just as the Superman has some supernatural powers, he's able to jump over buildings and things of that nature. He's seen by Nietzsche as a sort of antichrist figure, and often avowedly so, meaning that Nietzsche fully admits that this Übermensch is the antithesis to the Christian Christ. Whereas Christ, uh, while Christ exemplifies altruistic values, the Nietzschean Übermensch exemplifies power, uh, the beast of prey, this, this warlike strength. Uh, and in Nietzsche's mind, this Übermensch is the opposite of the modern man. The modern man, given the title, The Last Man by Nietzsche, in that the values of the modern man will only result in his extinction, according to Nietzsche. Nietzsche says, I teach you the superman. Man is something that should be overcome. So already a lot of questions might be coming to mind when you hear a statement like that. Uh, why should man be overcome? What is the basis of that thought? Is it perhaps Darwinian? That's a theme that will come up again and again. There are a couple important factors to consider in Nietzsche's magnum opus, um, that book being Thus Spake Zarathustra. For those who don't know, Zarathustra was this Persian prophet appropriated by Nietzsche from the religion of Zoroastrianism, I might have butchered that pronunciation. Uh, but basically what happens in Nietzsche's book, Zarathustra begins the narrative on the top of a mountain, and he's coming down from that mountain to a village to talk to the seas of humanity. While there, he preaches to them about the difference between the last man and the Übermensch. He describes the Übermensch as this person of power, this person of success, this person of strength, this person of virile, almost manly, warlike virtue to the exclusion of all weaker people. And then he tells them the last man, this person who has perfect comfort, perfect solace in their uh, modern comforts. And the mob responds, give us this last man. So you already see the difference between comfort and struggle. The last man exemplifies comfort, while the Übermensch exemplifies struggle against the human race, resulting in this transcendence. Uh, but the mob, of course, wants the last man in comfort. This is seen as the essence of modern man's moral failure, according to Nietzsche. Um, in the Übermensch, you see sacrifice, uh, or let me correct that. What is the role of a human right now, according to Nietzsche? The role of a human right now in the present is one of two things. You will either seek to preserve yourself or you will seek to sacrifice. Sacrifice results in the Übermensch. Self-preservation results in the last man, which is the end of the human species. Uh, so there's an interesting paradox there between those two things. But keep in mind, Zarathustra is not the Übermensch. He is merely a prophet of the Übermensch. He's seeking to bring the human race to this goal, this ideal of the Übermensch. Think of John the Baptist as the, uh, the voice crying in the wilderness forerunning Christ in the same way Zarathustra is the voice crying in the wilderness forerunning the Übermensch. John the Baptist says repent, Zarathustra says repent. 
John the Baptist says a moral code of altruism. Um, self, uh, it's interesting because the self-sacrifice here is very similar from their, their two respective perspectives. But the goal is not the glorification of God. The goal is the glorification of man. Um, it's an interesting thing. It's still very religious in its way of going about it, almost Christian, except instead of putting man at the forefront, I mean, instead of putting God at the forefront, you put man, humanity at the forefront. It's a very intriguing idea. So how is the Ubermensch achieved according to Nietzsche? There's a couple ways. The creation of new values. The citation for that is the entire book Beyond Good and Evil. Good and evil being described in this book from the perspective of the Christian. He's attempting to take humanity beyond that and say, good and evil is not simply denying yourself. Good and evil is not simply taking up your cross and following Christ. Good and evil is not even that. It's, it's not, it's not the humility. It's exaltation of oneself. It's taking on your mantle as a human. Of course, that's not necessarily true for everyone, because another portion of it is the encouragement of different moral codes for slaves and masters. That's illustrated in his book, Ecce Homo. The moral code of the master is very much seeking to help them become more in line with the Ubermensch. The moral code of the slave is seeking to help them assist the master and also sacrifice themselves that the Ubermensch may come into being. Third, the disillusionment of democratic government, as well as democratic systems of thought, since they encourage rule of the mob, seen by Nietzsche as the lowest common denominator of humanity. This is seen in the will to power. Nietzsche describes democratic government as the direct descendant of Christian theology. Uh, the emphasis on every individual having a divine spark, which is a very strong humanist idea, humanism being a, uh, a result of Christendom as well. He doesn't see all humans as having that innate value. Instead, you cannot equate the values of the lion, i.e. the masters, with the values of the sheep. So all of that leads to the sacrifice of standard humanity that a higher person, emphasis on this capital P, coming into being. <clears throat> so in closing, the Ubermensch, you might, those of you who are more uh, in tune with what's going on here, may notice that there are some Darwinian ideas related to the coming of the Ubermensch. We will talk about that in the next introductory lecture. But for now, just keep in mind, Zarathustra is a type of John the Baptist. The last man is the modern man. We don't want that. We want that to be sacrificed, that the Ubermensch may come into being. At least that's what Nietzsche says. Uh -uh. The Superman, the Overman, humanity being overcome, and ultimately a type of antichrist figure with almost supernatural powers being achieved. And the details of how that comes into being are somewhat uh, suspect.